And Juniper, uh, although I've been breaking some stories that have been kind of critical at Juniper, I've always felt that Juniper's product leadership has been phenomenal. Um, right? The mobile and software focus is very relevant. I think OpenFlow is an indicator of where the market's going on the converged networking side. Um, you know, marketing-wise, I need a little help, I think, over there in terms of getting the word out. Um, always been under the shadow of Cisco, and Cisco has just been twisting in the wind for the past three years, Dave, and, and just the Q, Q fabric, flattening of the network, east-west is really the trend, and then the question is, is it going to go to the software side. So what I'm watching is, I'm going to be at the Open uh, Open Flow Symposium on October 26th. We're going to go in, I'm going to dig in the trenches there, and what I'm watching is, you mentioned Big Switches, which is in Palo Alto, met those guys. There's another company um, that's just got like $60 million, such with the, and I don't know what the name of it is. Uh, you know what that company is? It's uh, Naveen, you know. Oh, shoot. John, why don't more networking companies found the mobile? Nasira. Nasira is the thought leader in the space. A little bit over Big Switch. Um, 60 million rays. Um, this is top of the rack stuff that's a threat to Juniper and Cisco on the hardware side, but I just see the software uh, network side being a big part of that. Uh, and the question is, is on the developer community, can the open source side take up the Juno space and win there? I mean, I think Juniper's got a good play there. Um, I think there's still some op open jury there. Mobile security, I think, is a hot spot for them that they're doing well in. I like the mobile why, security. Why more networking companies pound mobile? Well, Juniper was early on mobile, and what happened is, you know, obviously Apple was out there, added the poster child of mobile, just the user uptake. I mean, just now we were at SAP, we saw um, Sapphire putting out the data analytics using the iPad, so the mobile uptake as a workforce IT platform just hasn't evolved as fast as it should. People still run on Blackberries. So, you know, I think this year you'll see a lot more mobility, and that's to me, the consumerization of IT. So you got the consumerization of IT is still lagging on the enterprise side. The cloud and the infrastructure convergence side is still developing. So I've, I've always felt that Junos and uh, mobile is a good strategy for, for them. It's just that I don't think the market has moved as fast and has shifted a little bit. And with big data and cloud, we're seeing that now. And it's kind of confusing. Well, but I mean, it seems like you would want to be there, right? I mean, that's the, the, we were talking earlier about Apple, the most valuable tech company. Why is that? It's because of mobile. We're talking about the lack of Oracle's mobile. Um, and you, don't, you, you pulled up Juniper stock price, it's down from 17 from 45. I think they got hammered in the marketplace. Well, they the missed past. earnings, but it's, you know, it's, it's climbing back up. There's been some insider buying. That's, that's you know, I don't know if that's Well, I mean, I think, that, you know, Eddie comes from Microsoft. Kevin Johnson's a great executive of there. He's not a slouch at all. He's solid. Um, they have a fundamentally strong engineering focus, and their product leadership is really, really good. They're just not the marketing machine that Cisco is, and Cisco has got a huge arsenal of dollars. We know that. We talked. Well, we talked guys. about this. Uh, yeah, Cisco, the 800-pound gorilla. Uh, uh, Juniper, we called the innovator, and HP, what, the commoditizer. Is that? <laughs> we said. They didn't like when yeah, we said you know, that. But I mean, but I think you know, true. if you look at Junos, what they're doing there, and the the Q fabric, that's a relevant architecture. The question is, with cloud kind of cloud washing overlaying that, you had some confusion, and I think Junos has been watered down a bit in the marketplace by that messaging, and I think you know they didn't have the muscle to really kind of uh, amplify that. So. But I think they're in a good position. I think they have good beachhead, and uh, the app. when the app stores come to the enterprise, which they are now, then you'll start to see Junos, you'll start to see the benefits of this architecture, because now, when enterprise have to deploy services like SOA, like stuff, a catalog of services, then you're going to see the benefits of mobility, you're going to see the benefits of the of the network switches. I mean, don't you think the, I mean, that, the vision of app store for the enterprise, I think, is real. We saw that at SAP Sapphire. I feel like it's really nowhere, Oracle's kind of giving it lip service, but. That really is the vision a lot of CIOs we talked to. Citrix Synergy as well was another show that we were at where a lot of the CIOs in the crowd were talking about developing the app store for the enterprise. I mean, it felt real. Okay, so we got some breaking news here from uh, coming across the wire. Silicon Angle has got a story coming out that suggests that leaked sale no sales numbers from Amazon Kindle Fire on track to outsell the iPad. So uh, that's pretty significant product news that the iPad might be outsold by the Kindle. Um, again, this, this to me is really what I was trying to emphasize with HP. Um, if this is true, and we're going to have a story on this on, go to siliconangle.com, look for the story. If the leaked sales numbers suggest that the Kindle Fire is outselling the iPad, this is going to be a direct proof positive that HP needs to stay in the tablet business because when HP dropped the price of the touchpad, that thing sold like hotcakes. And that means that the price point is, if, if, if it can get down to the, a certain point, the indifference by the, by the brand 
will be a factor. In other words, if the iPhone 4S, for example, is $600, and the iPad continues to stay a high price, that's going to be the boutique jewelry of tech, and then you see the price points drop lower, you'll see massive sales. That's a direct threat to Apple. And um, that might be one of the reasons why Apple's stock price is dropping, so. Six, $600, what can, what can I get a state-of-the-art Android phone? Well, I was for? actually at Best Buy last weekend to get my son a new Xbox. A really and, nice uh, one, what's it cost? Really nice Android phone. Like, Best Android, HTC Android phone. Dave, I was how at much? three or four hundred. All right, so that's a pretty significant premium for the iPhone. That I was at, uh, uh, I was at Best Buy this past weekend buying my son a new Xbox, and who walks in is John Doerr, uh, Kleiner Perkins. Uh, he runs yep. the iFund over there, we, and I saw so him looking at the mobile phones. I was browsing actually the netbooks for two hundred ninety nine dollars. You can actually get a full netbook, um, laptop. And so you know, the price points have dropped down on the commodity side. That's going to absolutely happen on the on the Android as well. And if Apple continues to have the price margin, a price street price so high, you'll see a massive consumer uptake of the low end uh, market, and yeah, that's this, a direct this, threat. This is what happened the last time Jobs left Apple. Uh, you had John Scully, who basically wanted to make sure that every PC that they sold had a, you know, 50 plus percent gross margin, and they kind of priced themselves out of the market. And then Windows came in; it was the volume leader. Price kept dropping. It was good enough. Why doesn't the same thing happen with Android? Uh, also, breaking news from Kara Swisher: Federated Media buys uh, legit networks. Might you know take is that uh, the take is that uh, some developers, according to Marcus and Hopkins, weren't thrilled with the quality of the product. Uh, traffic basically, it's a traffic sucking machine, and uh, when you take traffic away from bloggers, they lose money. So, you know, a lot of changes going on. We heard from Juniper Networks, and. Uh, you know, I think just overall the network environment right now, both on the internet and hardware, is just crazy. So, you know, you know, you're going to see consolidation. We heard that last yesterday, and that will continue to happen. And uh, you know, it's just it's just crazy, Dave. Yeah. So um, we're here live at Oracle Open World. This is Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of Oracle Open World 2011. We're here in the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Um, we are inside the Cube. The Cube is the place where we bring in all the best guests, the executives, the end users, the bloggers, the analysts, to share their knowledge with you, our community. Um, a lot of this is probably new. A lot of you may not be familiar with Oracle, Oracle Open World. A lot of new parlance. You know, we're talking about you know, v, you know, VMs and OVMs and all kinds of you know, other tech terms. A lot of a lot of new acronyms. Well. Go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle.tv, check out the videos, go to services angle, go to wikibon.org. Um, wikibon.org is a place where peers meet and share ideas and solve challenging problems. Sign up for Wikibon, get invitations to private meetings uh, to interact with your peers. So uh, check out those resources. If you have a question, hopefully we have an answer. Let us know. Tweet okay, us, so at Furrier, at DeVellante, and we're here to help. So we're going to play in picture-in-picture -picture, uh, Siri Accelerator interview from South by Southwest 09. This is our first Cube prototype event that Mark Risen Hopkins did an interview with them. Mark had long hair then. Um, and, and this is a key part of the new Apple announcement is that this is a part of the new iPhone 4S and is essentially an assistant, voice assistant, that helps you use words, voice activation to find things. And... Uh, there's no sound here. Kind of like a droid had like two years ago. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Remember when I, Apple came out with the, you can press the number and call it? You know, like Blackberry had the Actually, it's, before. it's more advanced now. You can actually just say the number. Well, that's what I'm saying. Out, it's so, the other, you know. I mean, that's my, to my point though. I mean, you're seeing innovation outside of the Apple community. I, I see the same thing happening in, in mobile that happened in, in PC. Very similar anyway. You know, a lot of the innovations uh, coming from that larger ecosystem and, um, you know, I think $600, I think a lot of consumers are going to think twice about uh, a $600 4S. I don't know. Well, I think this is the innovation we're going to see. We're going to see automatic automation around the user experience, and Apple is leading the charge there, and uh, you know, the enterprise will continue to lag, I, as I I don't I think mentioning. they're leading the charge. I think that's... Uh, that, Who? That Apple? I, Apple. I, I, voice activation, droids had it for, for years. So it's more than voice activation. So this is truly innovation. AI okay. on your phone, not just parsing words. Um, and Apple is and Apple is leading innovation. So I mean, I mean, there's been voice yeah, recognition. It's hard to say. Apple's voice recognition. Voice recognition has been around for a long yeah. time, and uh, you know, Drag and all these companies. So Android's done a good job with it. But I'm I, not a big fan of Android, are you? I am a big fan of Android, but I'm, I think Apple's ten times better um, in terms of the phone and the iPad. I think on the phone side, what makes them better? 
the user experience, the integration, the software, everything is 10 times better. Um, except for Gmail <laughs> integration and YouTube, which is <coughs> phenomenal on the Android phone, hence the Google <coughs> integration. Um, on the iPad side, absolutely harder to take that same phone, form, phone fact phone form factor and make it in a tablet. And that is why no one's been able to crack the code on an iPad. It's just hard to do. As a software developer, it's, it's, it's incredibly hard to make that work. Um, syncing, and now with cloud, we'll see what they can do. So, you know, again, iPad's got a sizable lead, but if the Kindle price point is going to hit that number, and if those sale, leaked sales numbers by Kindle are true, that means that, means that you have a market that's, that's not Price sensitive. I mean, it's <laughs> what do you make of that? What do you make of that that leaked sales number? I mean, it's just um, an early push that it's not sustainable, or is it the, I think the real the, deal? I think that the demand for a tablet and phone and these kinds of UI devices is so strong, and that the price sensitivity of the number is the big deal. I mean, um, HP when they had the uh, touchpad sold out like hotcakes when they dropped the price ninety nine dollars. It's just off the shelf. They sold out in like days. So to me, that's where the market is, not 300. So that's a consumer pricing issue. So you know, I'm sure that uh, uh, it's going to be a, ba a big deal on price sensitivity. You know, who can meet those price points? Can HP, obviously HP lost money with a, t a touchpad, but can they meet that price point? I'm going to go check, check Twitter here. This is the Siri demo from, uh, from Apple. <coughs> All right, so we're here at Oracle Open World. I'm Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, and I'm here with John Furrier of SiliconAngle.com. We've got a number of guests coming up today. We've got David Flynn, who's the CEO of, of Fusion IO. Uh, before that, we've got Vaughn Stewart from NetApp. Um, NetApp, John, used to sell a ton of storage to Oracle, and then Oracle, of course, started to vertically integrate with the Sun acquisition. I, I, I doubt NetApp sells as much storage to Oracle, although it still has got tons of, of, of equipment installed. Uh, and I think Gary Ornstein is coming on today. Um, yeah, with David Flynn from the Fusion IO. Are they about coming him. on together? Or? I think they're coming on together. So why don't we go to the news? Should we go to the news? <coughs> you want to go to the news? And then we've got a spotlight on the high performance data center this afternoon. Um, uh, oh, yeah, so, yeah. soaring. Yeah, well, you know, tech is hot today. Tech's doing very well, with the exception of Apple. Um, you know, EMC's up, NetApp's up. Uh, Juniper was up. Tech in general is, is strong after a big sell-off yesterday. Uh, the one exception, of course, is Apple. Um, lack of iPhone 5 and the website being down uh, really is what, uh, what drove that stock, really the former more than the latter. But uh, Apple continues to be down, although it's recovered, John, from its lows. So Apple's only... Uh, yeah. You know, a couple points off from 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 its open, yeah. so it bounced off a of 360 earlier, went down you know, below 360, and it's coming back nicely. It's only down that, two points. That's now. the herd mentality that happens of the iPhone 5 disappointment, and when people realize that there's going to be an impact, um, you know, obviously you have Apple surging back up again. I think they'll finish the day ahead, so let's look for that. And uh, yeah, people realize that this is a new new product cycle, and it's 600 bucks a pop, and that's good margin on that thing. It's so Dave, let's, a just, lot of money let's just for review it. Oracle Open World. Um, Oracle Open World obviously is in San Francisco, California. We're here with theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the events and get the, get the talk to the guests and get the, the news and share that with you with insight. And I think the big story for Oracle Open World here is that it's all about big data. Big data is about Hadoop unstructured information, and this really, puts the, the, shines the light on the fact that mobile data and unstructured information is the key trend um, and successes of, of networking products like Juniper and HP right now shine the light on the fact that the market is changing significantly and the new user experience is happening. Yeah, and we're covering all the angles here at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. Um, we've got a page up uh, on Wikibon. Uh, Kian, if you could bring that up. Kian, if you could bring that up. So here you see, uh, this is uh, placed up by there by Jeff Kelly. You can see all the videos that we've done. Um, and we've got people live blogging, um, highlighting these videos, coming up with comments. So you can see it's a nice resource for you. Um, check it out. It's, uh, it's on wikibon.org. And at the very bottom you'll see um, all the editorial and articles on, on SiliconANGLE. Uh, dot com on services angle on Wikibon and so you know just really covering this trying to do a good job um, if you got questions let us know uh, and we'll try to get them answered so thanks everybody for watching um, okay so Vaughn Stewart is up next from NetApp 
Um, is Vaughn in the house? Yes, he is. So <clears throat> Vaughn is a virtualization evangelist, so we're going to talk about NetApp. NetApp's handing out these cool blue hats. They got a big booth here. Um, a lot of people um, know NetApp, but many, many may not. Um, NetApp.